In this lesson, we will look at the elbow joint and the structures that participate in the formation of this hinge joint. Let's start by looking at a simple line drawing that shows the right elbow joint from an anterior vantage point. There are three bones that participate in the formation of the elbow joint. The first one is the humerus, and we see the distal end of this single arm bone that participates in the formation of the elbow joint. More distally, we see the ulna over here. This is one of the two forearm bones, and we see the proximal end of the ulna. And the second bone in the forearm is the radius, seen here, which also participates in the elbow joint. If we focus on the distal end of the humerus, we see certain notable bony prominences. The first one is a prominent prominence on the medial side of the distal humerus, known as the medial epicondyle. This is an easily palpable bony landmark in a patient. The similar structure on the lateral side is known as the lateral epicondyle, which is far less prominent and is seen here. Towards the center of the distal end are two other prominences that are covered by articular cartilage and participate in the formation of the elbow joint. The first one of these is known as the trochlea and is seen here on the more medial side of the condyles. The name trochlea means pulley-like and it describes the shape of this structure. The other condyle on the lateral side is known as the capitulum and is this structure seen here which is round and knobbly and looks resembles a head and hence the name capitulum. We have similar bony prominences on the distal side as well. The first one is known as the coronoid process, which is this structure seen here on the proximal end of the ulna, and this articulates with the trochlea. Similarly, on the lateral side, the more proximal end of the radius is known as the radial head and is seen here, which articulates with the capitulum. These two structures move in the movement of flexion and require an area on the more proximal side of the distal humerus in order to be accommodated. And there is indeed a fossa, a fairly shallow fossa, known as the coronite fossa, which is seen here, which accommodates the coronite process in full flexion. Similarly, we have a radial fossa, which is seen over here, to accommodate the radial head in full flexion. These are some of the key structures in the elbow region. Let's now look at a simple x-ray. This is a plain AP x-ray, an anteroposterior x-ray of the right elbow joint. And we can see some of the same structures again. This is the humerus, which is the distal end of this bone. We can also see the ulna and the radius more distally over here. This is the radius on this side, and this is the ulna on this side. And these three bones participate in the formation of the elbow joint, which is a hinge joint. The coronoid process can be seen over here, and is outlined here in yellow-orange color. Similarly, the radial head is seen over here, and is outlined in reddish orangish color over here. These are two key structures that articulate with the distal end of the humerus to form the elbow joint or as, a, as known as a hinge joint. The lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyles are also seen over here on the distal end of the humerus and over here on the lateral side of the distal end of the humerus. The olecranon is seen over here, which is a very interesting structure seen on the posterior side and requires a posterior vantage uh, point view. Uh, we can see it in an x-ray because the radiation goes through and through, and it is overlapping with the condylar area of the humerus. We will see this more clearly in a lateral view of the elbow joint. And the olecranon fossa is the area on the distal humerus that accommodates this olecranon. Here we have an x-ray of the elbow joint, and this is seen from a lateral view here, and we see the three bones again that participate in the formation of the elbow joint. 
This is the distal end of the humerus seen here. And we also have the proximal end of the radius seen here and the proximal end of the ulna seen here. These are the three bones that participate in the formation of the hinge joint, which is what an elbow joint is. Let's now also look at those bony prominences that we looked at earlier. This is the coronoid process, which is part of the proximal end of the ulna, which is right here. And see how it articulates uh, with the distal end of the humerus. We can also see the radial head seen here, which is the proximal end of the radius and also articulating with that distal humerus. Note that the coronoid process and the radial head in this view, this lateral view, overlap to some extent, and much of the radial head seems to be hidden by the coronoid process. We also can see another part of the proximal ulna, which is known as the olecranon process, which is a large bony extension of the proximal ulna seen here. This is the olecranon process that had been outlined so nicely here. And note that the olecranon process extend posteriorly. It goes behind or posterior to the condyla, uh, condylar processes of the distal humerus. Any of these three processes, the olecranon process or the coronoid process or the radial head, can be fractured. And uh, in injuries around the elbow joints, these fractures are commonly identified.